thank you to everybody for joining us today. One more quick little housekeeping detail I want to point out. We do have the closed captioning enabled. So if you require it, please feel free to click that CC button at the bottom of your screen and view that transcript should you need it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So gsafleet.gov, let's dive right on in. So GSA Fleet is in the middle of a monumental initiative to modernize its systems. Some of these systems names on the screen you may have you may recognize and some you may have never seen before. But one thing is for certain, all 19 systems that GSA Fleet uses will be moving to gsafleet.gov. gsafleet.gov is a single platform that will consolidate, modernize and improve how you, our customer, buy, lease, rent, and manage GSA leased vehicles, as well as agency-owned vehicles. So why are we doing this? I've heard that question before. Well, the short answer is for you. GSA Fleet has always had its customers at the center of its mission, constantly striving to provide the right vehicle at the right price with great customer service and the data required to effectively and efficiently manage your fleet. And well, as technology has evolved and more and more data has become available, it has been become it has become increasingly difficult for our tried and true legacy systems to keep up. And so it's been years in the making, but Fleet is finally at a place where we can roll out new functionality that will make all users' experiences more easier and more efficient. So let's take a look at what we already have released in gsafleet.gov. There's a lot of different functionality available right now, but there is so much more to come. There are two important items I wanna point out on this screen. One is a help page was launched along with the last release and it houses user guides, video tutorials on how to use the system. More videos and information will be, be released as more functionality is built and released as well. The second point is to share at this time that there is limited functionality for our leasing customers. If the item you require is not seen here on this list, please continue to access GSA Fleet Drive-Through for those needs until notified. All right, so before we jump into some updates and FAQs, I did wanna take a pause to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who has provided feedback on our designs, participated in user testing, participated in discovery interview sessions, engaged with our platform, offered suggestions, highlighted challenges, and basically let us know how we're doing. We strive to build the best system possible and that's only possible with your assistance. And so, although that's not to say it has been perfect, it has definitely been something we strive for excellence for. Um, so with your assistance, we're gonna be able to continue to keep getting better, release more functionality and do it in a way that is most useful for you. All right, so, Time for some updates on the features in our system, as well as some FAQs. So I'm gonna turn it over to Carol Boros and Jonathan Hankis of the Vehicle Management System team to walk us through the next couple of slides. Carol, over to you. Thanks, Genevieve. All right, so the FAQ that we get for Fleet Leasing Card Replacement page is regarding the error message plate number does not exist or you do not have permission to access it. Uh, and that's when a user goes to order a, um, a new fleet service card. So the error is due to a backend data issue on our side and it only affects a small portion of our fleet uh, vehicles. Uh, this error occurs when a vehicle has had a recent license plate change or was transferred from one customer to another and our system is not properly associating the vehicle in gsafleet.gov. Uh, so if you um, happen to get this error message, please reach out to replacementcards at gsa.gov inbox, and our team will order a new card for you. Uh, we are currently working on a fix to this issue, and we hope to have it re resolved within the next couple of weeks. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna pass it on to Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan, I think you're muted. Thank you, Carol uh, and Joseph. The FAQs on dispatch and reservation, 
The uh, question that we receive is, I assign a motor pool to a user, but they tell me they can't see anything. What should I do? This is caused when your agency uh, signs that role to that user. Uh, right now, it's requiring a bureau. When they assign that role, they have to select an agency in a bureau. Uh, all motor pools are scoped at the agency level. So what should you do? Uh, you're going to have to contact the help desk to get this issue resolved. Please include the email of the person experiencing this issue. We are working to resolve the underlying cause of having that bureau mandatory when you scope the role. Uh, as soon as we get it fixed, we will be releasing that. So that way, we don't have to do that in the future. Uh, how do I get assigned as a primary dispatcher of a motor pool? Uh, at this time, ability to change this field, to change that primary dispatch, is restricted just to the help desk. You'll have to contact the help desk to get that primary dispatch of a motor pool changed. Another question we see frequently is, how do I add a backup dispatcher to my motor pool? Uh, you can get this when you are on the landing page of Dispatch and Reservation. There is an action button on the far right-hand corner to those motor pools. Select that action button. You'll see the, the edit. Select edit. The edit modal will pop open. You can then uh, remove or add backup dispatchers to that motor pool. If you need further detailed inf information instructions on this, visit page five of the Dispatch and User Guide. So some updates and enhancements requests that we have recently done to dispatch and reservation and also the fleet lease card replacement. So on dispatch and reservations, you have now noticed that there's a My Pools on the landing page of dispatch and reservation. This allows users just to view the pools they are members of. Uh, we also added uh, two other filters to this landing page as well, email address. You can now search a member's email address and display the motor pools that they are a member of and also that confirmation number. If you have a confirmation number, but you don't know what motor pool this belongs to, you can enter that confirmation number and only the pools, the pool that has that confirmation number will be displayed. Then once you go into the motor pool, you also have a members tab. In that members tab, we added filters. You can now search by member type and also emails to filter that. Uh, coming soon for dispatch and reservation, uh, we heard you, you will be able to print a reservation receipt and you'll also be able to filter the license plate on the main page. Uh, and also the email address filter will be on the reservation page coming up. On fleet lease card replacement, we've added a license plate filter to make uh, easy to search for your order history. Uh, coming soon, we also are going to allow you to export all the license plate orders that you've created. Uh, to the filter, we're also going to add a date range filter. And that is it. Thanks, Jonathan. My mute button got stuck there for a second. All right, so let's move on to roles and uh, permissions. So. In the spirit of FAQs, we have received a number of inquiries regarding the roles that a user can have in gsafleet.gov, and we thought it would be helpful to give a quick brief overview of them. So um, a quick note, as we continue to release new functionality in the system, we're also exploring ways to streamline these roles um, in the process. So this information is current as of now, um, however, it will probably change in the future. So. Here's an update as to where we are today. Roles. They're essentially answer the question, what can I do in gsafleet.gov? Or what can this user do in gsafleet.gov? Uh, we're going to take a look in a moment about e what each one of these roles are and what they entail. But before we do that, there's three steps in the registration process that users should be aware of. One is the creation of an account, right? This creates a user record in our system. Two is approval of access. This grants a user access to the world of gsafleet.gov. Three is the assignment of a role. The assignment of the role grants access to different features in the system, and it limits the user's view by agency, bureau, or office as it assigned or scoped, depending on the role, right? So it's a great way to get your people into the system, get them scoped to what they need, and make sure that they're only seeing the data that they need. All right, 
So customer administrators, this is the first role we're gonna look at. This one is the highest level of access that gsafleet.gov offers within an agency. These individuals can approve accounts, assign roles, and reactivate users. These are also the individuals that appear as the manager in the dropdown when um, a user is registering during the registration process. Customer fleet managers. So customer fleet managers was originally created for agency owned fleet managers to be able to access their agency owned vehicles, vehicle registration, manage license plates and run reports. However, it has been expanded with the last couple of releases to include leasing customers as this role is required to see and print vehicle registration cards for GSA leased vehicles. Um, a quick caveat, until more discovery work is completed, purchasing customer fleet managers can be scoped at an agency, bureau, or office level. However, GSA fleet leasing managers can only be scoped to an agency or bureau level as the concept of office does not currently exist in the leasing realm. So please be mindful of that when our customer administrators are assigning roles that um, all of our agency owned can be scoped to agency, bureau, and office, and leasing should stop after bureau. All right, next slide. Great. So the leased fleet card replacement role. Who gets assigned this is written exactly in the name. It's for our leasing customers. Um, this role is exclusively for leasing customers to be able to order replacement WEX cards for their leased vehicles. Um, again, as this role pertains to leasing, it should be scoped no lower than at the bureau level at this time. All right, motor pool roles. We have the motor pool dispatcher and a motor pool driver. Dispatchers can create and manage motor pools, create and manage reservations for themselves as well as on behalf of others, as well as invite members to a motor pool. Motor pool drivers can reserve vehicles and manage reservations, access a private motor pool if invited by a dispatcher or self-invite to a public motor pool. Okay, we've heard about what gsafleet.gov is, what functionality is available, what roles are active. As I mentioned before, with 19 systems moving into one, there's so much more to come. But let's talk about what's next for gsafleet.gov. Here is a quick look at the road ahead for the next couple of months for gsafleet.gov. As you can see, we're moving many of the drive-through features for leasing customers over in the near future. I'll have a few special guests joining me for a closer look uh, at these in a few moments. But first, let's talk about an additional piece of the puzzle that we've been working on to make it happen. And that is the customer number migration. So leasing customer numbers will be transformed. Um, and the reason that we're transforming them is to create more flexibility on how we manage customer accounts. So how are we doing that? Well, we're moving from a 15 digit hard coded information system. So 040100 as we all love and know to seven inch digits generated by the platform. It is gonna be less code based and more plain language. So instead of you, our user, having to memorize that 0401 refers to the Atlanta Fleet Management Center, instead, you'll be able to see Atlanta Fleet Management Center in words. Uh, we will also continue to use filters and search capabilities to ensure you will be able to find what you need when you need it. And lastly, we are removing BOAC from the customer number to allow greater financial flexibility in the future as well as possibly apply multiple BOACs to a single account or customer number. But a quick note on those BOACs. I have heard people say BOACs are going away. Well, no, BOACs are here to stay. The billing office address codes are used throughout government for financial transactions. Uh, my colleague Sarah Whitmore will talk a little bit more about in a few moments about how they will continue to be part of our lives in gsafleet.gov. All right, so what does this customer number transition and migration mean for you? Well, it presents an opportunity to possibly streamline your account organization. Um, I've mentioned a couple of times so far that agency and bureau exist already, but the concept of office has never really existed in our leasing realm. And we'd like to explore how we could organize that with you. 
there will be outreach that will happen in the very near future as we'll be able to have conversations to see exactly how you may want to organize your accounts in GSA Fleet.gov. Also, as more functionality is migrated, users will see just the information they need, right? So this depends, of course, on role, assignment, and scoping. But the idea that if you, if you manage a local fleet, you'll have quick access to your local fleet. If you manage a group of customer numbers as it exists today, uh, you would have access to that data and so on and so forth. And then lastly, the whole goal is to improve your user experience as barriers that you currently experience in drive through will be removed for in individuals with multiple customer numbers. So those of you that have purview over two, four, six, 15, 20 customer numbers, you'll be able to more easily download, view, uh, manipulate the data that you need to see without having to do so in a segmented way based on customer numbers. So I'm now gonna turn it over to Sarah Whitmore, the GSA Fleet.gov product manager for business management to discuss one of the next big items to be released, Wallet. Over to you, Sarah. Um, thanks, Genevieve, and hi, everyone. Um, as Genevieve mentioned, I'm Sarah Whitmore, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the wallet today. Um, this feature is going to be used to collect customer line of accounting details, um, and it's we're targeting a, a July release of the wallet, um, so it's, it's coming up soon. Um, and you can see here that it's going to be replacing the existing functionality of SpeedPay. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar uh, with SpeedPay, it is a customer facing module in GSA fleet drive through. Um, and it's where um, our DOD customers can enter their line of accounting to enable IPAC, which you can see here is intergovernmental payment and collection uh, for their monthly leasing bills. And um, the details that are in SpeedPay currently are very specific to DFAS, um, which is the Defense Finance and Accounting System. And so that's why, um, you know, with their requirements and what they need um, to come through on the on the payment, um, that's why it has been reserved for for DoD um, since it's in, in since its inception. Um, and so one of the things that we're looking to do is to allow civilian agencies to be able to add their details for inclusion on IPAC statements. And I should mention that IPAC is just the automated payment of your monthly bills. Um, and so what we've heard over the years from some of our um, civilian customers is that, you know, there are fields in there that, um, yes, while they have been reserved for DOD, they would actually really benefit um, the civilian side if they could enter some of their supplemental accounting details in there. Um, ultimately, that data that they can enter um, up front will um, be their IPAC statement. Um, and so I've just highlighted here the one field um, in particular, the obligating document number on their IPAC um, that they can now um, in the wallet add some details that will then feed uh, that field on their IPAC. Um, so definitely um, some, some growth there. And then lastly here, um, we are now going to be able to allow our DOD customers to pay their short-term rental bills via IPAC. Um, that has long been a pain point um, with some speed pay limitations. Uh, so going forward, um, we will just need DOD customers to add their line of accounting um, for those BOACs. And short-term rental bills will be able to, to be automated on, on the payment side. And so one of the other reasons that the wallet is now going to be open to all federal customers is because of new reporting requirements surrounding the treasury account symbol, which we commonly refer to as the TAS. Um, this is something that GSA's CFO has implemented um, for their, their monthly intergovernmental reporting requirements. And so they have required us to start collecting this data up front from our customers. And so you may be wondering what is a TAS? Um, so it's an ID code that's assigned by Treasury to an individual appropriation, receipt, or other fund account. And I've just put a little example over here to the right of the screen, um, and that's actually from our, our wallet itself, of, of the details or the fields that go into the TAS. Um, and then on the far right there, you can see what it looks like. That's just an example of GSA's Federal Acquisition Service. 
And so you can see it's got the agency identifier. Um, and then there's a component of the TAS to identify um, what type of funding, be it uh, no year funding, single year funding, multi year funding. Um, that is a key part of the TAS. And then there's also the TAS main and the TAS sub accounts to really identify that appropriation um, or type of funding. And so all of that, again, is going to be required, and it is required for all federal BOACs that span our fleet offerings. Um, and you can see here we've got purchasing, leasing, and short-term rental all must have a TAS in the wallet. Um, one additional thing to note with that is that there needs to be a one-to-one -one alignment of the BOAC and the TAS for each of our offerings. And so just to give an example, to put a little more context to this, um, Let's say you uh, you have a BOAC that you are using for your fleet leasing services as well as short term rental, um, but let's say that they come they need to come from different funding streams or there's different a different funding structure um, for each of those within the wallet you can select that BOAC let's just say one two three four five and you can select that BOAC along with um, fleet leasing and then you can enter your TAS details for that. Then you can select that BOAC again for short-term rental and enter a completely different TAS if you need to. You can obviously enter the same information, um, but we just really wanted to be flexible um, with this new feature to allow for the different funding um, strings that agencies and bureaus have uh, across you know, purchasing, leasing, and short-term rental. And one other thing just to, to add about that is um, having the TAS will support our future G invoicing requirements. So we won't be getting into that today, but just um, something coming down, down the road in the next couple of years. All right, so you're probably wondering what this means for you. Um, and I, I did mention that, you know, we're tar targeting July um, and that is right around the corner. Um, so the existing speed pay data will be migrated over to the wallet. Um, so come, you know, mid July when we deploy, um, everything will be in place um, and it'll be uh, it'll be attached to your billing documents and down to your your IPAX. Uh, furthermore, we are um, we have worked really closely with our CFO office to identify the existing BOACs um, for our offerings and to um, to identify the the TAS data for those BOACs. So that will be baselining the wallet um, for deployment. Um, Ultimately, we don't want anyone to be um, scrambling, you know, come July to get their data in um, before month end billing or anything like that. So we will be baselining it. Um, that said, we recommend reviewing the data post deployment, um, make any updates that you see fit for FY23. Um, hopefully everything's correct in there, but um, if something you're aware of that we weren't when we baselined it, this is the opportunity to make those updates. And then lastly here, um, you will be responsible, customers are responsible for um, adding their line of accounting data, which is really the TAS and any additional IPAC information for each fiscal year. One thing that we, we know to be a limitation in speed pay, and again, for those who are familiar, you probably know there's a pretty narrow window um, when you have to go in and add your line of of accounting for the next fiscal year. Um, so within the wallet, you're actually able to go in well in advance of the fiscal year. In fact, after we deploy, if you uh, want to go ahead and add your FY24 line of accounting, that would be great. Um, but you can add that the, the next fiscal year data, um, again, well in advance of that fiscal year. Um, it'll create a completely separate record so you can maintain your current year data and then, again, put in the next year data. All right, so uh, we're just going to touch on here not only how to access the wallet, but who should be accessing the wallet. Um, so first and foremost, um, you're going to need to create a gsafleet.gov account. Um, and we have established a new role specifically for users who need to be um, the ones to add and maintain this line of accounting data for their agency and bureau BOACs. That role is the agency financial officer. Um, and you're going to want to reach out to your agency administrator or customer administrator, as Genevieve just went to, just to make sure that this role does get assigned um, to your profile in the system. I know that there are several trainings out there um, that will that go through the whole registration process. Um, so that should be a good resource um, if you do need help. And we're obviously here to help everyone get set up um, within the system with this role. Um, 
And I know that there's, there's probably questions too, just about the wallet. This is just a, this is the first kind of, you know, entry to, you know, letting you all know about it. Um, but there are going to be several trainings coming up next month. Um, we will have um, several trainings as well as videos and desk guides made available to you all. Um, so, and I think Genevieve's going to touch on some of those sessions that are coming up in the, the next couple of slides. So back to you, Genevieve. Thanks, Sarah. All right. So uh, I'm very excited about Wallet personally. As a former FSR, I love the fact that it is being expanded to not only DOD, but all of our civilian customers as well. Um, I always thought the concept of speed pay and sort of IPAC, that auto pay feature, I probably rely on far too heavily in my, my personal life, um, can expand in, into the uh, fleet world. So I'm, I'm excited for this. All right. Another feature that we are going to be releasing soon, of course, um, is drive-through functionality, right? I mentioned caveat, coming soon, more information. Well, you see it here on the screen. Um, we are planning on moving over quite a bit of drive-through functionality in the near future. Um, in fact, almost all of drive-through will be migrated over in the next several months with two exceptions, CAM and CRASH. Um, these two are not being, uh, released in the next iteration only because they are being developed in conjunction with other system components and will be released at a later date. Um, so all of that great feature and functionality that we currently have in drive through will be moving over reports, um, PM Express, Mileage Express, all of that. Hopefully we'll be seeing that in gsafleet.gov in the very near future. All right. So with announcements of new functionality coming, and as Sarah mentioned, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the upcoming training opportunities as well. Um, so we do have desktop workshops that we will be scheduling on a quarterly basis. They will mirror quite the similar feel and look of what we have today, which is an overview of where we're at, what we've released, what's coming up, and of course, um, a nice hefty portion of question and answer should you have them. Um, there's also going to be third Thursday question and answer sessions. We plan on holding these monthly. Um, our first session is going to be on June 15th. And these sessions uh, you do have to register for, but they're basically come and ask your questions. You have issues or challenges in the system. Come bring your ideas, bring the questions, and we'll answer them there on the spot. Um, there's also going to be specialized sessions for new releases, as Sarah mentioned. And so Wallet um, will have a couple of sessions hosted on July 6th and one on July 13th for our customers. Um, to answer questions about functionality, we'll be releasing those video tutorials and user guides in advance. Um, and so those question and answer sessions are really to help you get familiar with the concept, the ideas, um, and best prepare for the deployment. Um, and then, of course, please feel free to visit the gsafleet.gov help page for video tutorials and user guides on all of the functionality we've discussed today and rolled out. Um, and then I also want to give you two contacts here because I'm sure you have questions that have popped up. And especially when it comes to financial matters, you might need to contact the expert and have a conversation. So for questions specific to Wallet, um, please email fleetbusinessoversight at gsa.gov. Um, there is a team of experts that is there that can help answer your questions, um, help you organize your BOAX, look at your customer numbers, et cetera. And then of course, if you have additional training requests or suggestions for gsafleet.gov, please email fleetsystemsmodernization at gsa.gov and we will get back to you um, either to set up that training, answer your question, or help troubleshoot your issue. All right. Uh, one other plug I want to put in, if, if any of the topics we've discussed today have uh, tickled your brain and, and you have said, you know what, I really want to be a part of this. I want to help contribute and provide feedback and my suggestions. Um, please consider joining our community of practice. Uh, we want to make a system that works best for you, and that means that we need your input. So sign up for that community of practice using a Google form um, that is linked in this presentation and will be shared out in the slide slides afterwards. And if your agency can't access uh, Google Forms, do not hesitate to email fleet systems modernization at gsa.gov. 
Um, again, that was the email address for the training needs. So let us know your interests and we can add you to that list. All right. Well, I know we're getting to thank you for today's, but I'm not ready to hand it over to Joseph just quite yet. Um, we do have a plenty of time for questions and answers. And I know I have seen several coming in in the Q&A block. So I'll just go ahead and start at the top and answer some questions. Um, we've had two about VCSS and whether or not VCSS is going to be modernized and uh, consolidated. So Sarah, I'll turn that over to you. <laughs> I'll take this one. Oh uh, yeah. So VCSS is, um, it's GSAs, it's an enterprise wide um, feature and it, it's where you can go in and view your, your monthly bills. Um, it is not changing. It's not going away. Um, and, and just to clarify, the, the wallet is the place where you will enter your financial data that will be essentially attached to your billing records, the records that we send over to GSA's accounting system, where they get summarized and, and put into um, actual the, the PDFs that you see in BCSS. Um, it's, it's the accounting information is just to make sure we're billing the appropriate funds um, for your, your agency and bureau. Um, so hopefully that helps clarify a little bit, but, but VCSS will not be, be changing in the bill statements. Your, your monthly billing statements will still be there. Thanks, Sarah. All right, we have another question. Um, Kenya Lee shared, you know, she manages a fleet of about 2,400 GOVs and there are 21 fleet coordinators. Each of these coordinators manages a portion of the fleet. So they only have access at an office level. Makes perfect sense. Um, assuming that we're talking about leasing vehicles, of course, right? The question is, if understood correctly, once a vehicle once, sorry, once drive through transitions completely, should that be taken care of? And the answer to that is no, not necessarily. However, I have you on my list of people we need to reach out to and speak with to make sure that we do get the organization of um, our, our leasing accounts organized in a way that works for everyone. So we'll definitely be reaching out to you to hear more about your um, ideas and what your concerns are. So we factor that in as we create our solution. All right, I do see another question. Um, will users be able to manage multiple BOACs in gsafleet.gov? Sarah, I'm kicking this one back over to you. All right, it looks like there was a follow-up to that though. Um, oh, correction, agency, not BOAC, sorry. Maybe, is that it? It looks like it. Well, here's, let's answer both questions. Yeah, good call. Um, will, will a, a individual have the ability to manage multiple BOACs in GSA Fleet Talkoff? Yes, and I believe that you um, spoke to that a little bit, Genevieve, with kind of the restructure of, of customer account and the ability to have a customer account that you can then have multiple BOACs um, tied to. So yes, absolutely. Um, and those BOACs will be in the wallet as well, where you are able to, again, put the, the financial information um, tied to those, those particular BOACs. So hopefully that answered your question. If not, we are happy to um, kind of sync up with you afterwards and, and work through that. Perfect, yeah. And I guess for the follow-up question about, is there the ability to manage multiple agencies in gsafleet.gov, I would say um, that is something that we would definitely want to explore more and hear more about your specific requirements. Um, so if you would reach out to fleet systems modernization at gsa.gov, we can schedule some time to hear more about your needs. All right, uh, let me see, what is our next question? There are all sorts coming in, so please keep them coming. All right, there is a question. Will everyone be able to see our office data? Um, being in charge of license plates, but not the other stuff like IPAC, rentals, drive through and FAST. Well, that's also part of the discussion, um, right? So as we're exploring incorporating offices into our leasing world, um, or into our leasing business line, that is a question that I would say being explored. But for right now, 
Um, the answer is if you are an individual that has access at an agency level, the idea is you would have access to all information within the agency. If you are an individual that has access at a bureau level, you would have access to information within your bureau within that agency. If you are an individual that would have access at an office level, then it would be office low, you know, down um, and vice versa. But if there are needs where that we may not be considering, where you may manage one office and you need functionality in multiple areas, again, please reach out to Fleet Systems Modernization at gsa.gov. Um, we'd love to hear your thoughts on um, how you would like to see it organized. All right. Looking here for a couple more questions. Um, we do have one that says, I am unable to simply reserve a car. What training or action should I take? And I'm gonna kick this one over to Jonathan. Thank you, Genevieve. Um, so if you're talking about dispatch and reservations, we can go in, you do have to be a member of the motor pool to go in there. If you would like training, definitely reach out for us and we can provide you training and walk you through the setting up motor pools, how you reserve a motor car in a motor pool, uh, assigning, getting a vehicle into a motor pool. We will be more than happy to provide training and show you the actions taken to do all this. Perfect. Yeah. And if Judith, your issue is is simply you have access to gsafleet.gov, but you aren't able to see your motor pools, um, please, please, please feel free to reach out to either Fleet Systems Modernization at gsafleet.gov and we can route your, your inquiry, or you can also um, go to the help desk and either give them a call or send them an email and they should be able to route you as well for um, resolution. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate that. Yes. All right. It looks like we have a Navajo Nation Tribal Division um, who is joining us, and they are interested in sitting down with a conversation um, with business management. So we'll definitely take that down as a note, um, but also please feel free to reach out to us as well. All right. Things are, as people are answering questions, things are moving on my screen. So I'm trying to keep my eyes on it. Uh, will there be a level below office in order to distribute fleet according to fleet managers? Um, you know, that that is what we are, are looking at. Um, and in the purchase realm, I think the, the lowest level at this moment in time is the vehicle. Um, within the leasing world, we don't actually know what the office and potential customer number relationship looks like yet. Um, so again, if you have suggestions or thoughts, please feel free to share them with us. We'd love to hear them. Um, let's see. All right, we've got more requests for folks to be added to the list to be reached out to for uh, business management. Um, is it possible for agency mid-levels to manage account roles and not just manage at the HQ level? Um, and the answer to that is yes, if that is designated by an agency fleet manager um, or the customer admin to a bureau level, it absolutely could be uh, managed that way. We do leave that information, we do leave that decision though up to our customer agencies though, of course. All right, let's see here. Uh, we have, oh, I see Jamie's answering one. Um, how do we create offices? And the answer to that is more to come. Uh, we are currently working on solutions for that. Um, reached out to the help desk for access assistance. What trainings and other actions should I take to prepare for the new role of GSA fleet coordinator? That is a great question. Um, if you are a GSA fleet coordinator for leased vehicles, uh, the, the number one person I would say you need to talk to is your fleet service representative, if you haven't already. Um, and if you need at, you know help connecting with that fleet service representative, please email the Fleet Systems Modernization Inbox. We are happy to connect you with um, the FSR as they are definitely your best bet to interface and learn all about GSA Fleet and what it offers as a program. All right. 
There is a question that I'm a little curious about. Will Unicor be moved over as well? Uh, Tracy, are you able to provide a little extra context on that one in terms of how Unicor would be moved over? Unicor is um, a vendor that provides license plates to us, um, well, at least in the GSA side of thing. I know they do outfits as well for other agencies. I see Vong answering a question for that one in particular. All right, uh, Amy, I see. So your question about being a new fleet vehicle coordinator is for owned vehicles, not leased. In that case, I would say definitely check with your agency to see if they have any additional fleet management rules and regulations you should be aware of. Um, but as it pertains to gsafleet.gov, all of our information right now is currently concentrated on the help page. Um, should you require more training, please reach out to fleet systems modernization at gsa.gov. All right. Let's see. All right, it looks like we have some notes. There is one question. Could you have more than one, more than administrative roles for your agency? Could you have more than administrative roles for agency? Yes, we have. Um, there's the fleet manager role. There is the motor pool dispatcher and driver roles that we talked about. There's also the fleet card replacement ordering role that currently exists in the system. And very soon to have the financial officer role as well. And more to come, of course. All right. Well, with that, any other questions before I turn it back over to Joseph? Uh, Veronica asked the question, is this the same training as for personal liability driving a GOV? And the answer to that is the training on gsafleet.gov under the help page at this moment in time is for gsafleet.gov functionality. However, there is other training still available out there. Um, you can either go to gsa.gov or you can also access that training via um, the drive through website. Stacy, you want to add something? Yeah, so the personal liability while driving a government-owned vehicle, we do have a recording of that posted on our desktop workshop um, playlist on um, GSA's YouTube channel. Um, as far as live versions of that course, we usually offer um, that in March. So we've kind of just missed that for this year. If you are interested in completing the Federal Fleet Manager Certification Program, that is one of the courses that's in that program as well. Uh, I was trying to think of which, which course number it is. It, it might be four, three, four, something like that. Um, so you would have to take a few courses before you could get to it if it's something you need. I know that there are agencies that have this as like required training for folks operating vehicles, but unfortunately, um, we don't control that. Um, we have a couple of ways you can check it out, but with the recorded version on the YouTube channel, we don't have a way to give any sort of certificate. So it's kind of on your agency to figure out how they want to give you credit for that. Um, I, it's something, it's something we get questioned somewhat regularly, but when agencies set it as a requirement, they didn't talk with us and consult with us to, to understand like when we offer it and how it works. So, um, my apologies to you if, if you are somebody that is in that boat, but you need to talk with your agency about it. Um, and if they're kind of giving you pushback. Uh, you can have them email our uh, fleet underscore training at gsa.gov, and we can try to explain the situation and, and hopefully get them to, to figure out something. But um, we can't tell on YouTube if somebody's actually completed watching the video or not, so we can't issue any certificates for that. Thanks, Stacy. Thank you so much. 
All right. Well, I think, let's see. Ah, we do have a question about statement of insurance. Um, th that is not necessarily a gsafleet.gov question, but um, just so you know, the federal government is self-insured. Uh, all GSA leased vehicles do have an accident packet in the glove box. And in fact, there's a gsafleet.gov point. Um, we are transitioning those documents that are found in our leasing vehicles to gsafleet.gov and will be accessible via a glove box feature. Um, so you would be able to pull up that information should you need on a phone um, by logging into gsafleet.gov or just by accessing the help page before login um, in order to have it. But uh, the federal government is self-insured. And so proof of insurance is either generally that accident um, packet or um, you could potentially download the federal registration card. It depends. I noticed that you mentioned um, at an airport, right? So I know at the Atlanta Hartsville Jackson Airport, they're able to use registration cards to prove that it's a federal vehicle and that you know it it is federally insured um, that way. So hope th hope that helps. If not, um, you know, feel free to email us and we can get an expert answer for you. I. Do not have a status on the last order of vehicles ordered, unfortunately. Um, however, if you do have questions, again, feel free to send that to us at the inbox and we'll forward it to the appropriate parties for a response. All right, any other questions before we adjourn? All right, well, I will turn it back over to Joseph to close us out. Thanks, Genevieve, and thank you panelists and everyone attending. Uh, today's session. Um, you will be receiving a follow-up email if you registered in about an hour or two. Uh, don't forget to check out our website to uh, see the recording as well. Uh, that link was provided in the chat earlier. Thanks everyone and have a great day.